The greatest gift God has given this world is the precious gift of grace. Please understand that grace is not a teaching. Grace is a person, the person of Jesus Christ. John 1.17 says, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Open your spirit and prepare to receive, through Bishop Herb Andrew, God's word of grace, which is building you up from the inside out, while positioning you to enjoy the inheritance Jesus paid for with his blood. This is your moment of grace. I am Bishop Herb Andrew, and this is your moment of grace. You know, as you study the Bible and you read the stories that are found in the Word of God, you'll find out that one of the most important concepts of the Bible is that of us as believers being made righteous in the sight of our God. As a matter of fact, in Isaiah 54 and 14, the Bible says, In righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near you. The Word of God clearly lets us know that when we are established in righteousness, The Bible says that we will be far from oppression, far from oppressive thoughts, for we as believers at that point shall not fear. The Bible also says that we will be far from terror or destruction, and that terror or destruction, it shall not come near us. Even there in Galatians chapter number 2 and verse number 21 The word of God says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. That is so, that is such a pressing and such an important point there. He says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. In other words, that word frustrate, to frustrate God's grace, it literally means to set it aside or to treat the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as though it is absolutely meaningless. Listen to how it reads in the uh, New King James Version of the Bible. In the New King James Version, it clearly says, I do not set aside the grace, the unearned, undeserved, unmerited favor of God. For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Oh, that is so powerful when you really understand what that means. He says, I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Now, we all know the difference between law and grace. We understand now that law demands while grace supplies. In other words, law demands righteousness from men who have absolutely no righteousness at all to give. While grace in turn provides or supplies righteousness as a gift, a free gift for the believer by simply placing our faith in the finished work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In other words, family, if you're depending upon your personal performance, if we are dependent upon our ability or even our personal obedience to make us righteous before God or even to try and get God on our side, then as it relates to us, Jesus died for nothing. The Bible says it again in verse number 21. For if righteousness comes through the law, If righteousness comes through what you and I are doing, good or bad, the Bible says that Christ then died in vain. So in this season, we simply cannot afford to allow our personal performance. We cannot afford to allow our ability or our personal obedience to determine our righteous standing before God. Our righteousness must be in Jesus Christ, and in him alone. Listen, we understand 
that being made righteous or walking in righteousness is always connected with us as believers being blessed. And rightfully so, because the Bible says in Proverbs 10 and 6 that blessings are on the head of the righteous, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. So we understand that to be righteous or to be made righteous, it puts us in connection with the blessings of God. But what we've been taught is that although we were made righteous by the blood of Jesus, that righteous position only extends as far as my next sin. In other words, yes, I've accepted Jesus Christ and now I'm made righteous, but once I've sinned, the only way for me to regain my position of righteousness is to confess that sin unto the Lord, which presents a problem of its own. Because the truth of the matter is, how do we confess a sin? Or how do we confess sins that we as believers have committed in ignorance? Listen to what the Bible says in uh, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter number 9 verses 6 and 7, and I'll read those in the New Living Translation. The Word of God says, When these things were all in place, the priests regularly entered the first room as they performed their religious duties. But only the high priest, I'm in verse 7 now, only the high priest ever entered the most holy place, and he only did that once a year. And he always offered blood for his own sins and for the sins that the people had committed in ignorance. In other words, family, when the priest, the high priest, he would go into the holy or the most holy place on the day of atonement. And the Bible says that at that time he would offer blood for his own sins but then he would offer blood for the sins that the people had committed in ignorance. In other, in other words, when you think of committing a sin in ignorance, I guess we all must understand that we have that capacity. We have the capacity to commit sins that we are not even conscious of. And if we can commit sins that we are not conscious of, how can I confess a sin that I really am not aware that I even committed? When you think about this, it really magnifies the need for each and every one of us to embrace the revelation that we are righteous, not because of what we have done, but we are righteous because of the finished work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, that's so important in this season, especially when you begin to understand that righteousness is always connected to blessedness. In other words, the blessings of the Lord, they are on the head of the righteous and righteousness is always connected to blessedness. But understand as well, not only is righteousness connected to blessedness, but righteousness is the key to our prayers being answered. Or let me say it a different way. Righteousness is a key. It is one of the keys to us as believers living our lives with answered prayers. You see, when you believe that your righteousness is affected by uh, your good actions or your bad actions, it really negatively impacts the way that we approach our God, especially in times of prayer. Think about it for a moment. When you begin to think that when I do good things, now I am accepted before God and I can come to him in prayer. But on the flip side of that, when I've not lived my best life, now that position, that thought pattern, it hinders the way that I approach God during times of prayer. Because that thought pattern, what it does to us is it unconsciously causes us to reject the awesome privilege that God has given us through the finished work of Jesus, which is 
the liberty of coming boldly to God's throne of grace. Oh, y'all know what the Bible says in Hebrews 4 and 16. He says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In other words, when you really begin to place your righteousness on the back of your actions, when you begin to place the weight of your righteousness on the back of your 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 good actions or your negative actions, it really causes us to unconsciously reject this awesome privilege that God has given unto us. And that is the privilege of coming boldly to the throne of grace, coming boldly so that we can find the mercy and the grace that we need during our challenging moments. Listen, righteousness, it is connected to our blessedness. Righteousness, it is a key to our answered prayers, but righteousness is also a prerequisite for boldness. You will never approach God boldly without a revelation of your personal righteousness that is ours based upon simply placing our faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Proverbs 28 and 1 says, The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. See, many people, they are reluctant to approach God boldly because they feel that they really don't deserve to be heard. They're placing their righteousness based upon their actions. And come on, family, when we look at our actions, some days we're good, some days we're not as good. And so many right now are reluctant to approach God boldly because we feel like because of our negative actions, we really do not deserve to be heard. And this is why in this season, we must embrace the revelation that we as believers, we are righteous, not because of what we have done, but we are righteous because of the finished work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are righteous because he who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And in this season, it is so important that you hold on, that you embrace your position of righteousness by faith, because righteousness, it is a key. It is a vital key to us as believers operating with answered prayers. Listen, I'm going to talk more about this next week because we're in a season now where we don't just want to pray, but we want to know that every time we pray, we are not only being heard, but we are being heard and our Heavenly Father who loves us so much he is manifesting answers to each and every one of those prayers. So make sure throughout the rest of this week, do not, do not frustrate the grace of God. Do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness comes by the law, then Christ Jesus in our life, he died in vain. But because we understand that our righteousness is not based upon us. It is based upon his finished work. Therefore, Jesus' debt for us, it brings about victory. It brings about a level of trust that allows us as believers to operate with answered prayers. Listen, family, I'm going to pick up on this next week. It's going to bless us in a tremendous way. But in the meantime, enjoy your life. Walk in righteousness. And this is your moment of grace. Be sure to follow us on our social media platforms by subscribing to our Beacon Light of Homer YouTube channel and following us on Beacon Light of Homer Facebook and Instagram pages. 
Join us for a life-changing word on Sundays at 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. for our Beacon Light of Homer worship experience or Wednesday on our Grace Reloaded Bible Study at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Bishop Herb would love to hear from you. Leave your comments and be sure to stay connected by subscribing to this Moment of Grace podcast. If this podcast has been a blessing to you, make sure you share it with your friends and loved ones. Remember, because of his awesome grace, our God is faithful to manifest every blessing and benefit Jesus has paid for through his finished work on the cross of Calvary. Our part is to believe, receive, and enjoy what has already been provided, motivated by his tremendous love. Until next time, this has been your moment of grace. Thank you for sharing on today.